overflows living by consciousness living guided by consciousness moment to moment is awakening and to remain in that state is enlightenment but the question comes how to attain to that state first and then live you have to understand your egocentric state and once you understand this you can come out of that state very easily if in silence for even a single moment you have the glimpse of your existence as egoless then you can analyze it and also you can enter the phenomena of ego or what it is the mind is accumulated past a storehouse of memory the mind is never here it is never now it is always from the past it is accumulation it is memory all the experiences that you have gone through all the information that you have come across all the knowledge that you have gathered heard listen or read that is accumulated the mind is constantly accumulating the mind goes on accumulating even while you are not conscious it goes on accumulating even while you are asleep the mind is constantly at work of accumulation you may not be aware of it while you are asleep and if there is a noise on the road the mind accumulates it the mind needs no consciousness to accumulate it goes on accumulating even while you were in the womb of your mother and through hypnosis the memories of those days can be awakened you do not remember anything about taking birth but the mind was accumulating whatsoever was happening the mind was accumulating and now you it can be brought to surface again through hypnosis the memory can be brought <coughs> again to your focus and millions of memories are being accumulated this accumulation is mind memory is the mind how is the ego created the consciousness is within and around the consciousness are your memories on the circumference there is a center and around the center you draw a circumference this circumference is the accumulation of your memories it is periphery they are helpful they can survive with you cannot survive without them they are needed but a new thing happens between these two that is known as epiphenomena there is an epicenter the center at which the earthquake is taking place but around that there are so many vibrations felt so this is known as epiphenomena in the act of love making the center of activity is one point but its vibration are spread over a vast area almost to the entire body your life is an effect of a primary phenomena there is a pri primary phenomena happening at a concentrated or one particular point but it cannot affect the primary phenomena life is an effect of primary phenomena but it cannot affect the primary phenomena in philosophy of mind epiphenomenalism is the view that mental phenomena are the epiphenomena in that they can be caused by physical phenomena but they cannot affect the physical phenomena 
the things are happening at the physical plane centered at a particular point but its effect spreads all over consciousness is within you you are within and there is no ego there is no i within you are without a center on the periphery every moment knowledge experience memories go on accumulating this is mind and whenever you look at the world you look through this window whenever you pass through a new experience you look through the memories to interpret you look at everything through the past and the past becomes the looking window constantly looking through the past you get identified with it and that identification is e identity crisis or ego let me put it in this way the identification of the conscious with the memory is ego the identification of conscious with the memories is ego you when you say i am a hindu i am a christian what are you doing no one is born as a christian or a hindu you are simply born as human being then you are taught you are conditioned to think that you are a christian or a hindu or a muslim this is memory you have been taught to believe this whenever you look through this memory you feel i am hindu muslim or christian your consciousness is neither of these it is simply consciousness but you have been taught to be hindu muslim or christian this teaching is accumulated on the periphery now you look through the glasses the whole world is colored those glasses stick too much and too deeply with you and you are never away from them and you never put them aside you have become so accustomed to them that you have forgotten that there are glasses on your eyes and you are looking through these whenever you get identified with the memory and in knowledge or experience or name or form that then i is born then you are young you are old you are rich you are poor you are beautiful you are not beautiful you are educated or you are not educated you are respected or not respected then you go on getting identified with things which have been accumulated around you and ego is born ego is identification with the mind that is why when you are silent ego is not because when you are silent the mind is not functioning that is what silence means whenever the mind is functioning you are not silent you cannot be the functioning of the mind is the inner noise the clattering the constant clattering within you when the clattering stops or it is not there you have gone beyond it you have gone within moved within there is silence and in that silence no ego is there but it happens only sometimes and only in a moment that you are silent that is why you feel that those situations in which this happens are lovely you start desiring those situations you go to a hill while the sun is rising in the morning you look at it suddenly you have an upsurge of joy you feel blissful a beauty descends upon you what has happened really because of the silent morning and silent rising of the sun and the green tree the hill suddenly your inner clattering has stopped 
the phenomena is so great all around you such beauty such peace and tranquility that you have stopped for a moment in that stopping you have realized a non-ego state for a single moment of course that this can happen through many situations in sex it happens in music it can happen in anything which is so great that you are overwhelmed overpowered and your constant chattering is put aside forced aside for a moment it will come again whenever you are egoless accidentally or through some practice you feel a subtle bliss which you have never felt before bliss is not coming from outside it is not coming from the hill or from the rising of the sun or from the beautiful flowers it is not coming from sex act it is not coming from outside the outside is only creating an opportunity but it is spurting from inside deep within so if you repeat the outer situation again and again it will not come because you will get immune to it you will get accustomed to it the same hill the same morning again you go there and you do not feel anything you feel something is missing because for the first time it was so new that mind stopped completely it was like deja vu so new the past clattering stopped but the next time when you go there everything is known there is no oh the mind continues this happens with every experience in any experience if you feel joy it will be destroyed if you repeat it or try to repeat it because then it is a repeated experience you cannot put aside the mind so the second thing to remember is that mind is accumulation your consciousness is just hidden behind this accumulated past and you are identified with it whenever i say this i am that you are creating the ego again thirdly if you can understand this then the third point is not difficult and that third point is that mind can be used as an instrument there is no need to get identified with it you use the mind as an instrument and in an instrument there is no need to get identified with it remain separate and really you are ever bit because you are here now always present mind is the past you are always ahead of it it is just lagging behind like a shadow this very moment is a new thing your mind cannot have it a moment later later it will become the memory every single moment you are free that is why buddha has emphasized the moment so much he says remain in the moment and there is no mind but the moment is atomic it is very subtle you can miss it easily the mind is always the past whatsoever you have known and the reality that is passing through now is the part of the mind it will become part of the mind a moment later if you can be aware of the reality here and now you will remain always transcendental to the mind and if you can remain transcendental to the mind always ever just using as an instrument ego will disappear you will be egoless and when you are egoless nothing else is to be done then all that all else happens on its own you have become vulnerable and open then the whole existence happens to you all the ego ecstasies are yours then 
there is nothing else to be done enough for now.